miracles signs and wonders to follow us hallelujah we don't want nobody to leave here the same way they came hallelujah 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 Woo! Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Woo! Jesus hallelujah have your way oh God have your way oh God let your healing virtue flow hallelujah deliver on today God deliver on today God oh Lord hallelujah we need you Jesus we need you Jesus we need you Lord hallelujah 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 send the ladder rain hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you thank you thank you hallelujah 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 oh God oh God oh God hallelujah you know when you're praying and you don't you run out of words you just say oh God oh God oh God saturate this place God oh oh God oh 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 God oh Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. wonder in my soul he's a wonder in my soul he's a wonder in my is a wonder in my soul bless in the yes 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for one brand new day, God. Thank you for life, health, and strength, God. Thank you for the activities of our limbs, God. We give you praise on today, God. We thank you for waking us up, God. Hallelujah. We praise your name, oh God. We give you glory, God. Oh, oh hallelujah. We want you to have your way, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless everybody, oh God, under the sound of my voice. Oh God, lift us up, oh God, above every circumstance. Lift us up, oh God, above every sickness. Lift us up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God. Have your way. Move in the midst of your people, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to say yes, oh God. Help us to surrender everything to you. In the name of Jesus, God, have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, God, move by your spirit. Let your will be done, God. Let your kingdom come, God. In the name of Jesus, God, reign on us. God, reign on us. Oh, Jesus. Oh, send your help, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Have your way in the service, God. In the name of Jesus. Touch, heal, and deliver, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Send your word on this morning. Send your word with power and demonstration. In the name of Jesus. Bless Mother Bucks, oh God. Touch her body now, God. Strengthen her in the name of Jesus. Touch Mother Lewis, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Touch our first lady, God. Touch and heal in the name of Jesus. Lift her up, oh God. Lift her up, oh God. Stand up in her, God. Use her for your glory, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We need you today, oh God. Have your way. Touch everybody, God. Under the sound of under the sound under the sound of my voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we bless you, Lord, we love you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we bless you. Touch our bishop, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, we ask you to take further proceedings of this service. Let everything be done according to your will. And, Father, you get the glory. But give us the victory. You get the glory. Father, give us the victory. We'll be so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. These blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. And it is so. To the church say amen. Amen. At this time, we have our New Testament reading by Sister Hazel Terry. Our Old Testament reading by Sister Hazel Terry. Our New Testament reading by Sister Charmaine Campbell. Following that will be our welcome by our own mother, Ruby James. Please come in that order. Amen. Amen. New Testament scripture. Behold, I will do a new thing now. It shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen this people have i formed for myself this people have i formed for myself they shall show forth my praise god's word for god's people i will be reading you the gospel of matthew chapter 6 verses 33 through 34. but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you 
Take therefore no thoughts for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glorify God. We glorify God. He's worthy this morning, saints. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. The Lord has blessed each and every one of us to be in the house of prayer today. And we are just so grateful to be here. And we just thank the Lord for each and every one that are here. Today, even though our bishop is not here right now, we give honor to our, the best bishop there is. Glory to God. Edward T. Cooks, the jurisdiction of Prelate, and his beautiful wife, Sheila Cook. We thank the Lord for them. We have some wonderful, wonderful leaders of Ohio North, first jurisdiction. Glory to God, number one. Glory to God, and we thank God for that. We give honor today to the one and only, the amazing Mother Thelma Giles Butts. Even though she's not right here right now, we give honor to her. Our jurisdiction supervisor, Department of Women's of Ohio North, first jurisdiction. And our extinguished guest is not here either, but we want to give honor to her too. Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, General Supervisor of the International Women's Department of the Churches of God in Christ. And we just thank and praise God for our leaders today, saints, because truly we have some wonderful leaders and I praise God for our leaders today. There is nothing like wonderful, good leaders that tell you the truth, hallelujah, because of your soul, the thing that you need. And I just thank and praise the Lord for the wonderful breakfast that we had and our international leader came before us and she gave us some wonderful words today. And I just thank her for that. Lord, I'm here to give you the welcome. And on behalf of our superintendent, the best superintendent in the world, <laughs> glory to God, Dr. Robert L. James, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Our district missionary, wonderful woman of God, Sister Nadine Holmes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. And the Capital City District. Thank you, Jesus. There is no district like the Capital City District. Do you hear what I say? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And we come to welcome you today and to greet you to the city of Columbus. Ohio, where you can find love, peace, joy, happiness, and care. We hope that as you enter in, you felt peace and you felt joy and that happiness, oh God, because truly you are welcome today. We came to praise and we came to magnify the Lord. The Capital City District truly honor, is honored to host the 2018 101 Holy State Convocation, glory to God. And we are pleased to be celebrating today our Women's Day service. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for our beautiful women that are here today to help us to celebrate this. And we want you to know that you are welcome. Not one, not two, but each and every one of you are welcome here today. The Capital City wants you to really know that. And we've come to praise, to magnify, and to wish of God because truly he is is worthy to be praised, saints, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel like praising God because no one know, like the individual know, what God has done for them, hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name, and I know what God has done for me and for my family, and truly I praise him. We are a hand-clapping district, foot-stomping, tongue-talking, Pentecostal, church of God in Christ. Praise is what we do, that we are the capital city. And we want you to know that we are we welcome. You welcome once. We thank you. This is what our district, the Capital City District, represent. Capital. C is for choice. Joshua 2415 state. And if it seem even to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Thank you, Jesus. We in the Capital City District will serve you while you are here. 
Whatever you need, we are here for you today. And we will serve you with our best hospitality that God has given us. A is for a bad, a bad. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And while you are here, the capital city, have your knees covered. Just ask. You see, we have badges on. Capital City have badges, so if you want need anything, please let us know. We are here for that. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful saying. I'm sorry about that. He is for praise. We in the Capital City love to praise God. We encourage you here, and we welcome you to praise God because he's worthy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. And we thank the Lord. As we said, you might say I'm saying it a whole lot of times, but that is what in my heart, and I thank God for it. I is for increase. We ask God to allow this convocation and this Women's Day service to increase our faith even the more. We want you to leave here with faith overflowing in you. Glory to God. T is for thanksgiving. Let us enter his courts with thanksgiving. Let us enter his courts with thanksgiving. Let us enter his courts with thanksgiving. First, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. And it says, first, let us enter his gates with thanksgiving too, and into his court with praises. Let us be thankful unto him and bless his name. The capital city is thankful for you today, allowing us, to, each one, to come together on this great Women's Day service. A is for assurance, blessed assurance. Jesus is our. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We are heirs of salvation, purchase of God, hallelujah, born of his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are washed in his blood. Be assured that you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Whatever your knees are, he's here today, saint, and you don't have to leave here like you came. L is for love. We love you, we love you, we love you. First John states, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. C is for conquerors, glory to God. We want you to leave here knowing that you are a conqueror through him that loves you. For I am persuaded, neither death nor life, glory to God, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any creature, thank you, Jesus, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I is for inheritance. Capital City wants you to know that the inheritance of the kingdom is yours. Matthew 25 and 34 states, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Glory to God. Taste. We invite you to taste today. Just taste. Our supervisor is here to give us the word. We want you to taste. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good as the word go forth. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. And the best thing is the word of God. When the word of God go forth, you are welcome. Welcome, welcome. We love you, the Capital City District. Hope that your stay, the rest of your stay, will be exciting, enriched, memorable. God bless you, and we welcome you once. We welcome you twice. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the Lord have his way. Thank you. We thank Mother James for that welcome. At this time, our mother is coming in. Would you please stand to your feet? Ohio North, first jurisdiction. Welcome our own general supervisor, International Department of Women of the Church of God in Christ, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. Walking hand in hand with the best supervisor this side of heaven, Mother Thelma Giles Butts. Oh, hallelujah. And we thank God for our visitors, Mother Jackson, Mother Jones. Amen. I'll get your names. We thank God for the our guests that are here, 
our guest supervisors, Mother Maddie Mays. Amen. God bless you, mothers, to all of the beautiful mothers. We are so excited. We are so blessed. Come on, put those blessed hands together. So blessed. Give them an Ohio North First Jurisdiction welcome. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. And we are so excited. Amen. Well, amen. We're looking for God to move in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready to have church? Are you ready to give God praise? Are you ready to give him glory? Is he worthy? Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Thank you, Jesus. At this time, our own pastor, Tracy Whitthorn, is coming with praise and worship. Let's receive Pastor Tracy and the choir with the words of amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord,
God is glorified. How many of you know that he deserves all the glory? He deserves all the praise. He's worthy of everything we can give him. And I know I can't speak for you, but I'm sleepy. My voice is in Cleveland in the bed with the covers over it. But the Lord is still worthy. He's worthy of our praise. So this little song says, the son of God is lifted high. Come on, y'all gonna practice because I'm gonna y'all gonna help. The son of God is lifted high. The son of God is lifted high. Is that the right word, Squeezy? Oh, wonderful and glorious. Jesus, the son of God is lifted high. Come on, let's bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we say, the Son of God is lifted high. 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 The Son of God is lifted high.
wonderful. We glorify him, the son of God, the one who died for us. Hallelujah. Let him be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. The son of God. Hallelujah. The one who got up out of the grave with all power in his hands. We glorify him. We magnify him. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. And because he lives, whoa, hallelujah. We got a right to praise him. And we got a reason to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel him. I feel him. I feel him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. You know, I look forward to, I'm looking forward to Women's Day. Because I wasn't sitting over there with the men. You know, I, I felt a little, some kind of way. Having to jump up and praise God. With all the brothers behind me. Knowing that I have a reason. And a right to praise him. Because y'all remember. Just, just hold on one minute. Y'all remember my nephew I told y'all about. That had fourth stage cancer. Well the first week of June. The doctors gave him a week to live. Well we got the family together. And we begin to fast and pray. We got his mother to Texas. He's in Mansfield, Texas. And she got to, the, to that room and we begin to decree healing. He was in hospice, y'all. He was in hospice, y'all. With a week to live. My nephew is at home. Out in his yard. Working in the yard.
glory. He's worthy of all the honor. But can't nobody, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. I tell them all the time. Praise is an antidepressant. It's an antidepressant. You can't praise God and stay depressed. Because if you praise him, he'll come where you are. And when he inhabits your space, you can't stay depressed. You can't stay down. You can't stay broke. You can't stay defeated. All you got to do is give him praise. Can I get some help over here? All you got to do is give him praise. Praise. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath ago and God healed him of prostate cancer I have three people in my family right now with fourth stage cancer but I told somebody they not going to die unless God want them better than we do and we want them bad we want them bad we want them here with us so the only way they going to leave here is God want them better than we do because he's a bad God. Woo, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all don't want to sit down. Y'all got some more praise. Y'all want to take it to another level? Don't play with me. Don't play with me. We got a brother back there dancing, y'all. We ain't gonna let him dance by himself.
is what we do. You know what? We don't have to take everything that the devil throws at us. If you're dealing with something, come on, get it in your hand, in your imaginary. Because the same thing he threw, threw at you, let's throw it back at him.
because I want to see Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. We thank and praise God that our bishop is in the room. Amen. Amen. Bishop Edward T. Cook is in the room. Bishop is in the room. We saw him when he walked in the door. I'll make up some words. <laughs> He's in the room. Y'all remember we didn't have a lot of fancy songs. We just said, He's in the room. 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 God is in the room. Had to stop that or we ain't gonna go no further he's in the room he's in the room god is in the room i didn't know the names of our other guests our other special guests our other supervisors i knew mother mays because i grew up we come out of the same church. Amen. Mother Mays. So I honor Mother Mays, supervisor of Ohio East. I honor Mother Blendon Jones. Blondine. All right. Mother Blondine Jones, supervisor of Ohio Northwest. What you saying when I call your name, Mother Mays, what you saying? Wave at the people. Mother Jones, would you stand? Wave at the people. Ohio South Mother Rene South Mother Renee Brandon. Mother, would you stand? Wave at the people. And our own Ohio supervisor of Ohio West, Mother Barbara Jackson, she comes often. Would you stand? and wave at the people we are so blessed we are so blessed amen there's so much power in this house and the name of the church just happened to be Jesus power I wonder if they thought about the fact that there's power in his name Woo, Jesus healing in his name but I'm not going to mess with that because that name there's something about that name Something about that name. You can't say it too many times and he's in there and you don't feel him turning over. But that's something about that name. At this time, our, our first lady, amen, the beautiful, anointed, Sheila Lynn Terry Cook, we'll say it like Bishop said, is coming with words of inspiration. You want to do it down there? Amen. I know. We love you, First Lady. You know what? First of all, Mother Lewis, this is what we do. We're not doing this just for you. We're doing this for him. This is what we do, and we give God all of the glory, all of the praise, all of the honor. Thank you, Jesus. I looked over here, and I said, we go. We go get to the to the lights on the floor. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But I looked over here and saw Mother Betty Williams. Wave your hand, Mother. If you don't feel like, if you feel like standing, stand. If not, just wave your hand. We are so glad to see you, Mother. We love you so very much. We love you so very much. And know that we are yet praying for you. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Now, Missionary Blevin said, what, what was the name of this church again? Jesus Power. And we know that there's some power up in here, up in here. Now, they got the lights down here
And I shouted so this morning, Mother, I'm tired, really. <laughs> I'm tired. But my husband is here. My bishop is here. And we all know what's going on with that knee, but we know where the power is. Now, Bishop can't shout right now. But Superintendent Bercy Nash, I want you to come up here. Hit, grab, grab one of these spotlights, whatever one you want. Your blue shoes match one of these lights. Elder Dennis Ford, I need you to come here. And this dance moment is going to be for my husband because I want him healed from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. If God can heal cancer, he can heal this that I talked to you about. He can heal that knee. He can heal my muscles. He can heal my joints. And you know what? We got to have something for him to heal. So, Elder Ford, you know how we do our laps at New Life. I want you to lap all around this building for Bishop. Superintendent, you know what to do. Right in this circle, you know what to do. Amen. Go for it.
And two can chase 10,000. Don't you know, can't no devil stay in this room? Deliverance is in the room. Healing is in the room. Ha, ah, God. Whatever you need is in the room right now. Because Jesus is here. The choir is coming at this time. Oh, Jesus. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Come on, bless. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. O my soul. O my soul.
thank you for this women's women's day choir. Let's give them a hand. This time we're gonna worship the Lord in our giving. Our own district missionary, Thelma Darnell Livingston is coming. The one and only, the one and only. She's coming, so help us to worship the Lord in our giving. It is worship. Hallelujah. Our sacrifices. Lord, receive our sacrifices as we honor you in our giving. Let's say amen for Mother Livingston. Come on up, Mother. I thought I'd stay up. Let's say amen. Let's say amen again. Let's say amen like we in the church of God and Christ and we are having a hallelujah Holy Ghost time. Amen. I honor God today to our bishop and his companion and to our state supervisor and to our own international supervisor, Mother Baba McCoo Lewis, and all the supervisors from Ohio. All the supervisors from Ohio. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for how good God has been to us on today. And we know we're here to receive an offering for our state supervisor. We're here to receive an offering for our state supervisor. And our bishop is the head of this house, so we're going to ask him to come. Praise him. Can we say praise the Lord? It is always a privilege to be here on Friday. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean? You can only come this far And who showed the moon Where to hide till evening Whose words alone can catch a falling star Well I know my Redeemer 
that spins things in orbit runs to the weary, the worn out, the weak, and the sad,
start on time so please let's try to be here on time at six o'clock please and also we want to uh, keep in mind that elders council is at five o'clock and that will be here at the church also we have our um, purity and sunshine band retreat that's going to be august 3rd and 4th in geneva ohio and that's uh, I always get this mixed up, Cornea Christian Camp. And uh, we want you to pick up a registration form for that, please. See Sister Linda Hicks, our Sunshine Band president, and also Sister Iris Fields, our Purity president. Our communication table has T-shirts for sale, also Centennial tapes, and our Bishop's book is for sale. And we're asking everyone, please pick up something from the communication table, and especially our Bishop's book, because when he becomes that national author, we want to say, I've got that book on my shelf. So we want to pick those books up today. Also, registration is still open. We're asking you to visit the vendors. Uh, also, we are I have a special announcement from Akron. The Ak one of our members of the Ohio North uh, First Jurisdiction lives in Akron, so she sent congratulations. And also, they are sponsoring a special veterans. It's going to be on two uh, Fridays, which will be August 3rd and September 7th. The time will be from 1 until 2.30 p.m. And it's going to be at the Family Recreation Center in Akron, Ohio. Now, all the information is out on uh, the uh, Ohio North Women's Department table. So please pick up one of these flyers uh, and uh, help these, uh, this community development program that is sponsoring this program. And let's see, our special, we want you to watch our PowerPoint. We have a PowerPoint presentation, so please pay attention to the screens. Is it ready? Oh, it's not ready right now. Okay, so uh, we don't have any more... Um, until that is ready, I guess they had presentation on uh, the, what was done earlier this week with the Urban Initiative and also the Christmas in July and our town hall meeting. So they wanted to show you some of the activities that had taken place here in um, Columbus. But at this time, we're going to put you back and we're going to put you in the hands of Mother Bannerman. Let's say amen as she comes. God bless you. Also at 2 o'clock, we will be in our bishop's lunch, and that will be in uh, the hotel, and that will be in Hayes Room A, and that will be at 2 o'clock.
I want you to put your hands together now. Praise God for our gift from God. Amen. But this is who she is. And now I want you to officially receive. Would you stand with me, please? All of you that can, officially receive our jurisdictional supervisor, the one and only, Mother Thelma H. Giles Butts. God bless you, Mother. That's higher than I. That's higher than I. Give God a hand clap and please be seated. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I Woo. that's higher than I he's higher than I he's higher than I he's higher than I he's higher than I Higher than I. Woo! Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his high name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his high name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his high name. Bless his name. 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 Bless his high name. Bless. Oh. Y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know how I felt right now. Sister Butters, oh, oh, I just don't know how to express myself. I am so grateful for the things that he has done. I'm grateful for the victory he's won. My heart is overwhelmed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, you know, we praise him with our breath. The Bible says everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. But those that worship him must worship him in spirit. So my spirit just wants to worship. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes I have to tell the Lord, 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 don't act up in me. Lord, calm me down. Calm me down. Calm me down. Y'all be, be seated. Maybe it's because y'all standing up. Y'all be seated. Y'all be seated. Y'all be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. 
I just love him so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. stay there and we do our have our international guests here and I want her to give a good report to the executive board when they go back. Oh I'm so thankful to God. I give him honor. I give him honor. See, y'all keep saying hallelujah over on that side. So I'm going to turn over here. I just, so, y'all saying it over there. I guess I'll turn this way. Y'all got, y'all got it? Y'all feel it over here too? Oh, oh well, I'm going to go over here to the... Oh, what? <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. The, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a different sound. You don't listen to the music, but what I heard over here was a different sound. I didn't, I didn't hear the music, but I heard a different sound. That, that is a different sound. Okay. I give honor to God and to all whom honor is due. I am so grateful and honored. It's just a pleasure to serve as supervisor under the leadership of Bishop Edward T. Cook. And then that's giving my hand. And I'm not going to go through all, everybody by title. I, I'm thankful for all that you've done and for all that you've given, the gifts, uh, the flowers, 
the fruit, everything that was in my room. It was just beautiful. And it was just a view of beauty when I opened the door, colorful beauty. And I'm thankful for sh you showing your love to me. You don't have to do nice things for people. It's your choice. And I'm just so glad that you did it for me. Thank you so much for, for every title and non-title person in here. Amen. I'm grateful for you. Put your hand on your sister. Now, you know what I want you to do? I want you to extend your hand this way so it's on their back. So that your hand is on their back. You know, I, I know the word says that if you say it, you can lay hands on the sick and they would recover. The Lord gave me a song that signs and wonders are in the hands of the saints. And I'm not talking about your physical hands. I'm talking about the spirit of God that rests in you as a temple. So lay your hands on the back of somebody that's in front of you. I was there to do it for my bishop and I didn't want to be out of order, so I got his adjective. Just lay it, because I want to see my bishop heal, like Sister Cook want to see her husband heal. I want to see your brother heal. I want to see your sister. I want to see your sister-in-law heal, and your sister heal. All that, we have a testimony. I want the testimonies to change so that they're victorious of signs and wonders and you know what I want it to happen today I just have enough faith for it to happen today thank you God thank you God when I settled myself down from the dance floor the spirit of the Lord just overwhelmed me that I don't know what to do when the spirit of the Lord overwhelms you like that. You just sit still and wait till he finished. Amen? That's all I know to do. I just surrender myself to him. Did you lay your hands on the person in front of you? Now take your hands off. Because it really ain't about you. Oh, it's about him. I, I was looking at the clock. I was looking at Bishop. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I got to get myself together. I'm glad today to have some of my family in the house. Oh, my brother sneaks up on me. That's my only brother left. And he's here with his wife. Now, now you all, y'all got to stand up. I know we had the photo shoot. But now you're going to have to have the family tree that's over here on this side. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Giles. Amen. Y'all clap for my brother and his wife. Amen. Other members of my family and my church are over here, and they've been in present before. Amen. So I won't call on them, but I'm grateful I, my pastor is in the house, my covering is in the house with my bishop's covering. So I have, I'm here to introduce our speaker for the day. And I looked at the program. Was that, was that my pastor that said amen? Now, you know what that meant. Get on to it. I, 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 heard, I heard that voice. And I, I, that's what my job is. Sister Sheila, I never know how the Lord going to work in our service. So I chose to present 
our speaker with the gift before and of our appreciation. Come here. Uh, before she gets up, because we're going to have to have a choir. And in case you all didn't know, this Elder Hooks is officially a member of the Department of Women. He, he just doesn't wear a white dress. So we eat together. We speak together. He's officially, he doesn't miss a women's convention. He's there with his wife. Amen. Amen. Then, Sister Sheila, I, uh, I left my glasses up there. Amen. But so, oh, can I? Oh, mother, I think I can read this right here. It says, maybe I can. What does it say, Sheila? Read it. Ohio North First Jurisdiction, Women's Day Speaker, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, July 20th, 2018. Thank you for being our guest today. This is from Ohio North. We love you. I've loved you for a long time. It hasn't been, you, I think, I wasn't a supervisor, I don't think, when I first met you. Thank you for your personal impact on my life. We love you. Amen. Now, you know, Mother, one more time, you know, Ohio North and the First Lady of Ohio North, we have to have pictures. I call her sometimes Sister Lola, and what Lola wants, Lola gets. So if you'll just turn to the side, right here, this way, and we're going to take a picture for our First Lady. Amen, because I'll be in trouble if I don't get it done. Amen, amen, amen. Now he's saying one more. Okay, amen, amen. Thank you for, for tolerating us with our, with, with, with our love. It's just, just a part of our love, mother. Amen, thank you so much. Now I know you all saw the bio, amen. Now, I am not going to read the whole entire bio. We've spent time with her this morning. She's a lady. She's a lady. She's a lady. Amen. Amen. How many of you have already read it? See there? See there? So can I just speak from my heart? But what I know about Mother Lewis, I went to, uh, I've, I've spoken for Mother Lewis. Can y'all believe that? I've been to her jurisdiction. But the one thing that impressed me, she didn't, she took me in her car that she drove, took me to a restaurant. And she must go there often because they had a special seat that was just me and her. And she just like talked to me. And just talked to me. And I was just in awe that a woman of God like Mother Barbara McCool Lewis would spend that much time putting in me what she saw that I might have needed for whatever I was going for my future. Never knew I would be working as closely with her as I am. But I'm so grateful and it's my pleasure. Amen. So what I'm going to do, she is a woman of God. She is, you know, we said the Bishop Charles Edward Blake in the women's department. Don't worry, I'm not going to say Bishop. She is the president. 
She is the supervisor. She's the number one person in the Church of God in Christ. She's the international department of women supervisor. And she's here. I'll take my whipping from the bishop for not reading the entire bio after Mother Lewis speaks. Just before she comes to us, I'm going to ask Sister Tracy if they will give us. Uh, Tracy, don't take us in. Take us in. Just make it short so that we can receive the words from Mother Lewis. Amen.
Dear gracious Father, we bless you on today. We exalt you. We honor you. We praise you and we adore you. All that we have done and all that will be said, it is for your glory that you be glorified in this holy convocation. Lord, I ask, realizing that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, that you meet the needs of this congregation one by one and name by name, lift up hung down heads, set any captive free, heal and touch sick bodies. Lord, you're a miracle worker. There's nothing too hard for you. Bless these great leaders. Bishop Cook, thank you for Mother Jow's butts. Thank you for every district missionary, every pastor, every superintendent in their respective places, Lord. Let your glory continue to be revealed in this holy convocation. Thank you for traveling mercies. Thank you for protection and direction over the airways, realizing that it had not been for you on our side. Lord, I don't know where we would be, but Lord, we thank you for the glorious church of God in Christ. We thank you for the churches that are open across the country and around the world. We thank you that we're the beacon light, we're the standard bearers, we're the trailblazers. Oh God, continue to touch us and strengthen us and illuminate us that we may continue to shine and that we're going to the highways and the hedges compelling men and women, boys and girls who so desperately need you of your saving power. Lord, in these next few minutes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing prevail. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And oh, what a glorious day this is and has been for your 101st Holy Convocation of the Ohio First Jurisdiction. Did I get that right? All right, Ohio North First Jurisdiction. One, that's right. <laughs> God bless you. To the Honorable Bishop Edward T. Cook, let's praise God for the leader, amen. I honor you, always so kind and pleasant whenever we meet at the holy convocations and the meetings, you're always the same. And I honor you on today. The lovely first lady, the lady that stands by his side. Amen, Lady Sheila Cook. God bless you. Oh my, what can I say about this wonderful woman of God? Mother Thelma Giles Butts. Amen. Member of the executive board. She stands as my area representative for I believe it's five or six states in this area and represents me and stands tall. Certainly with my new assignment Mother Thelma Butts was one of the first supervisors that the Lord placed in my spirit. And of course, my very first convention in Orlando, Florida, I know that the people of the Lord were blessed by the ministry of your jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Thelma Butts. Mother Butts and I have been friends for a long time. We didn't just become acquainted. And you know, when the Lord is preparing and putting things together, you just, you don't realize at the time what's going on. But she's a woman that stands close by my side, full of wisdom. She's an authentic worshiper, an authentic woman of God. She's comfortable with herself. And when you're comfortable with yourself, 
then you can touch and impact the lives of so many other people. And so I'm just so honored to be here in Ohio North number one. Certainly to Mother Mays, Ohio East, Mother Jackson, Ohio West, Mother Blondine Jones, Ohio Northwest, and to Mother Renee Brandon, Ohio South, North, South, East, and West. Ohio is in this house on today. I'm so glad to see the great women who stand as the armor bearers and stand as the leading women, the role models in the whole state of Ohio. There's much history in Ohio. Uh, when my plane touched down on yesterday, I could not help but think about the great Bishop James. Amen. We honor his memory and the impact that he had not only in Ohio, but across this church. I remember when, uh, and I'm so sorry she's not here, Mother Annette James, who was in California. She was certainly one of the sweethearts of our youth department. We came up together in California and we heard about this Bishop James. Who is this Bishop James that's coming to take one of the sweethearts of California? And oh, she served honorably as a pastor's wife and a bishop's wife. I think about Mother Sarah Thompson. We remember her, Mother Mary Ellen Meredith, Bishop Fields, amen, Bishop Jordan. Oh, the rich history and legacy of Ohio in this grand old Church of God in Christ. All of the district missionaries stand. You look so beautiful on today. We praise God for the district missionaries. Amen. These are mother's armor bears, and you certainly showed it on today. All the pastor's wives that are here, all the pastor's wives stand. God bless you, the wonderful pastor's wives of Ohio North, led by First Lady Cook. We had a wonderful time together uh, with our chat and chew. It just wasn't long enough. But we enjoyed the fellowship of the pastor's wives and the district missionaries fellowshipping together. And I cannot come to Ohio without recognizing, I believe Dr. McAllister calls him the chief Levite. Dr. Curtis Daniel, God bless you. God bless you. What a significant role he plays during the women's conventions and the national meetings as the Lord uses him on the uh, so anointed to play those keyboards. I'm not going to be before you long. I know the bishop's dinner is, is forthcoming. I want to recognize District Missionary Yolanda Hill, who travels all over the country with me. Amen. Thank you, District Missionary Hill, for your service. If you will turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25, familiar passage and narrative of the word of God. Mark, chapter 5, verse 25. And if you will stand with me as I read the scripture, the King James Version, if you have that Translation, if you will read along with me. And if you have it, say amen. amen. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may just touch his clothes, 
I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. The woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be healed of the plague. Be whole of the plague. You may take your seat. In the presence of the Lord, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. I want to share with you just briefly, I'm going to abbreviate this a little bit, how to take possession of the promises of God. How to take possession of the promises of God. One day a farmer was walking through his pumpkin field when he happened upon a gallon-sized jar. He poked a small pumpkin seed through the neck of the jug and left it. A year or so later, when the time came to harvest the pumpkins, the farmer came across the old glass jug. Oddly enough, the pumpkin seed had grown and filled the jar completely. With no more room to grow, it stopped growing. The farmer broke the glass and held up the pumpkin that had grown the exact shape and size of the jug. What does this tell us? You can only grow as large as the jug that you are in. You decide the size and the scope of your existence. Dear saints, dear women of the Church of God in Christ, mothers in Zion, district missionaries, pastors, wives, teachers, doctors, lawyers, Bible scholars, entrepreneurs, trailblazers, champions, the world around you is looking at you. Why are they looking at you? Because you're different. You are a holy woman. They know when you can get a prayer through. They may not want to be bothered with you much of the time, but you just let them get in trouble. And they will certainly gravitate to you. Many are depending on you to be that cutting edge example. Living epistle, written and read of all men, those that will affect better homes, better schools, better communities, for a better world. However, women of God, it is you individually that determine how much of the fullness of God's promise that you will experience. It's centered around your personal relationship with him. Some theologians have come up with 3,000 promises. Others say there are 7,000 promises. It's not really known, but be assured. God's word has given you a promise for every circumstance, every condition, every situation, every crisis that you have in your life. He wants us to live the abundant life. John 10, 10, the thief comes but to skill, 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 kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So those dreams and vision, those inward desires that he has birthed in your spirit, they're for real. Look at your neighbor and say, your dreams are for real. They are his promises to you 
regarding your purpose for his glory in your present and in your future. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who worketh in you the will and to do of his good pleasure. Very often people use the word promise as no more than a good intention, easily broken if not convenient. But when God gives you a promise, it's not wishful thinking. Number says he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, it will come to pass, and it cannot be reversed. You see, our God is almighty. He's all-knowing. He's all-power. He's everywhere at the same time. His word is absolute. It's infallible. It's unfailing. God's promises ignite expectation. A promise is a commitment. It's a guarantee. It's a pledge. It's a vow. The promises of God are really the heart of the Bible. Every promise spoken by God is based upon his perfect character. So, scripture says, his promises are yea and amen. In other words, they are a sure thing. You have a promise of protection. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You have a promise of healing. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. He has the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He has promises of blessings because he tells us we're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the field, blessed in our going out and blessed in our coming in. And then he promises peace, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he promises strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then, women of God and men of God, he promises forgiveness. He tells us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse all unrighteousness. Dustin, I don't know where you're going. Take your seat and sit down. See, see we know him all over the country, don't we? Now, we don't practice sin, but if we sin, we have the promise of forgiveness when we ask for forgiveness. Our text gives us an unnamed woman. She's never mentioned again in the scripture. We don't know her background except that she had a debilitating disease which caused her to hemorrhage for 12 long years. No doctor had been able to cure her. She'd spent all of her money and still wasn't cured. Because of her condition, she had been deemed ceremonially unclean, according to the Old Testament in Leviticus 15. This prohibited her from being seen in public places. But despite the law, she went after what was hers to claim. And that was God's promise of healing. Weak in her body, at her wit's end, and discouraged and depressed, and all alone, and yet she said, oh, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. What can we learn from this unnamed woman in obscurity who possessed, took possession of the promise of God? Number one, she had faith. Jesus told her in verse 34, Daughter, it is your faith that has made you whole. Look at your neighbor and say, It takes faith to possess the promise of God. She had no resources, no friends, obviously no family. She had been reduced to a social outcast. But she believed if she could just get close enough to touch the source of healing she knew she would be made whole it has been said people of the Lord you've got to see it before you see it obviously she saw herself in the future looking and feeling much better than she felt right then 
Hebrew says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith activates the promises of God. I talked about the pumpkin that grew only as large as the container that it was in, a little gallon jar. But I know you want to excel. I know you want to be all that God has called you to be. And so we fight the good fight of faith. Actually, there's only one fight that we're supposed to be in, and that is the fight of faith. The enemy tries to take our faith and to cause us to doubt, but we've got to hold on to the fact that if God said it, it will come to pass. And so I ask you on this morning, how do you see yourself? Don't allow yourself to be trapped in a tiny, limited environment, in a gallon-sized jar that limits your growth spiritually and mentally and economically and intellectually and educationally. And then don't let guilt and condemnation of your past put you in prison and block a positive, fruitful image of your future. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Then search the scriptures and study some of the mighty works and exploits that were performed by flawed individuals. Moses was a liar. David had lust problems. Elijah was a quitter. Paul persecuted the saints. Peter talked too much. And the list goes on and on, but they believe the God of limitless possibilities. Mark says, if thou just can believe, all things are possible. This desperate woman took a leap of faith and was made whole. Do you want platinum status with God? When you are platinum, you get special attention. You're moved from the back of the line to the front of the line. You get a lot of upgrades and immediate attention all kinds of amenities. When you live in the faith realm, you get God's attention. He is pleased with those who wholly depend on him. Are you a faith walker and a faith talker? Do the things that God say from his word, are they priority for your life? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And so Habakkuk 2 and 4 says, the just shall live by faith. Romans 1 and 7 says, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38 says, the just shall live by faith. People of God, it takes faith to unlock the promises that God has for your life. We walk by faith and not by sight. This woman was broke, busted, and disgusted. Afflicted in her body all alone, she was an outcast, but she took hold and took possession of the promise of God. Are you tired of your endless situation? Never able to excel, always depressed. If you're not depressed, you know somebody that is depressed, always has a sad story always discouraged, dealing with low self-esteem and rejected. But you can take possession of the promises of God by calling those things that be not as though they were. You have to see your unsaved husband serving on the deacon board. You have to see your unsaved children singing in the choir. You have to see yourself in that exclusive corner office if you're looking for a promotion. My God, this woman was a woman that walked by faith and not by sight. But not only was she, did she have faith that if she could just get close enough to the healing source that she would be healed, but she got in the press. Verse 27 says, when she heard of Jesus, she got in the press. Scripture says, when the people heard Jesus was there, 
The people came from everywhere. They got in the press. Now the press is to move by weight or force in a certain direction. People were thronged together. There was shoving and pushing. Everybody was trying to get to Jesus. Her touch was so profound and so impactful that it touched him. He turned around and he said, who touched me? For I feel virtue has gone out of me. When you get in the press, you are in an environment, an atmosphere of diverse spirits and mindsets, sick folks, lame folks, troubled folks, mentally wounded folks, hurt folks, negative folks, rejected folks, rebellious folks, deceitful folks, naive folks, strong-willed folks, weak-minded folks. Unless you live unless you live a recluse life or you're in solitary confinement, even in this church today, we dealing with a whole lot of folks that's got issues and problems. Science says that one out of every four of us has a mental problem. Oh yes it does, just look down your aisle. But you got to stay in the press. There's a lot going on around us, people of God. In our homes, on our jobs, in our neighborhoods, and yes, even in our church. But look at your neighbor and say, stay in the press. Stay in the press. You cannot allow the tactics and the schemes and the devices of the enemy discourage you where you go home and have a pity party. Shake yourself and look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. He told us to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. The promise is your labor is not in vain. And then he said, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary when your name's not called. Don't be weary when you don't have a job or title or position. Don't be weary in well-doing. My God, just wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We ask too many questions. We don't walk by faith. We walk in the flesh, and all we see is what we see. But God has a plan for our life. It's the promises of God that we take hold on and say, Lord, if you said it, I know it's going to come to pass. This woman kept her eye on the prize. She wasn't even supposed to be around other people, but her declaration was, if I can just touch the hem of the man who can make me whole. When you go home and give up, that reduces you to a pumpkin that can only grow the size of a little gallon jar. But know this, his word says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. The choice is yours to learn how to trust him. And when it gets rough, and it will, oh, don't be under any illusion that once you accept Christ as your personal savior, that it will be a flowery bed of ease. The enemy opens all doors against you to come against you because he's trying to destroy you. But when it gets rough, oh, women of God, don't let the enemy see you cry. But when you get home, you go in your secret closet and shut the door and say, Lord, I need your strength. Lord, I need your help because he is Jehovah Shammah. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's a very present help in the time of need, Lord, I need you to help me. And then you compose yourself and you come out and you wash your face and put your biggest pretty hat on and walk through the church doors. And when someone asks you, how are you doing? Say, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. My God. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
Oh, the things that you don't understand and the pains that you experience and the rejection and the criticism being talked about and being misunderstood. Say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I praise you. I know it's the making of me. I know you're trying me in the fire. I just want to touch the hem of your garment. And I know I'll have more strength. I know I'll have your protection. She was kicked and scorned. What are you doing here? Many of the people asked. They knew that she was ceremonially unclean. What are you doing here? Kicked to the curb. But she wanted something so desperately. She stayed in the press when they talking about you. And when your name is rumbling, when they lying on you, stay in the press. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Stay in the press. Oh, yes, you might have made mistakes along the way, but Paul says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. I'm reaching forth to those things that are ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high call, which is in Christ Jesus. The kingdom suffereth violence, but the violence take it by force. So you've had setbacks, interrupted plans, and unexpected roadblocks, but stay in the press. I said there's nothing easy about the press. Sometimes the more you pray and the more you fast, the tougher that things get. But remember, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself. And then you're seasoned in the press. You're refined in the press. The hymn that says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Keep your sights on God, uh, God's limitless possibilities for your life. Saturate your spirit with scriptures that build you up. Quote them all through the day. Learn how to talk to the Lord, not just when you come to church, but talk to him on the freeway. Talk to him in the bathroom. Talk to him in the kitchen. Just thank him and praise him and magnify him. Lord, I bless you. Lord, sometimes we spend a lot of time asking God to do things for us. But if we can just up, lift up our voice in praise and in worship. Oh, I glorify you. Oh, I magnify you. And in his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. My Lord, someone said you cannot swim to the new horizons until you lose sight of the shore. You've got to quit looking back. Come out of your comfort zone. God is trying to prepare you for your next level. He's trying to prepare you for a greater work on your job or in the community, in your church. He's trying to prepare you. And with that, all he needs is a yes, Lord. I don't fully understand, but yes, Lord. I don't know why I have to go through this, but yes, Lord. I surrender my life to you. I yield myself to you. Talk to him all day long. And if you talk to him, he'll touch and come back and talk to you. She had faith. She stayed in the press. But she took possession of her promise. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. And so I say to you on this afternoon, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Look at your neighbor and say, be healed, be, healed. be delivered, be delivered. And, be and be set free. Until you get up and do something that changes your situation, nothing is going to happen. Take possession of your promise. Learn how to declare it and decree it. The healing testimony that we heard. Sister Blevins said she decreed it and she declared it. Just begin to decree and declare your healing. Decree and declare your promotion. Decree and declare your financial blessing. Lord, I decree it, I declare it. I walk in it. I will not doubt whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive it, my God, and you shall have whatsoever you say it, but you cannot doubt, my God. 
If you want to grow in the things of the Lord, you have to inconvenience yourself. You have to take time. Early in the morning will I seek him. Take time to get out in that cold uh, bedroom. And if you're married, I just tell the single women how blessed they are not to have a husband. Sometimes it's a blessing not to have a husband. Because when the Lord nudges you to get up and go pray, you don't have to go in the other room. You can just cry loud and spare not and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I'm called to you. I'm called to worship you. I'm called to give you my life. I'm called to be used for your glory. So whatever it is, that college degree or wounded spirit that you need healing from, turn around in your message. Favor at the bank, winning the bid for the contract and publishing that book and recording that song. Just decree it and declare it. It is so, Lord. Send me, give me favor. Tell me what to say and what not to say. Tell me how to connect with people that can help me, that will take a hold of the green, of the, of the dream. And remember the steps of a good woman and a good man are ordered by the Lord. If you want your children to excel, learn how to expose them to environments that nurture those aspirations. I remember growing up as a child, my father was a pastor. And after we had our chicken dinner on Sunday afternoon, he would put us, he and my mother would put us in the car and he'd take us and drive us. We left the hood and he took us up to Beverly Hills and we'd go all up and down those houses, those streets and we'd look at those mansions. They were trying to expose us to far beyond what we were in, in living in. And then women of God, sometimes it takes a radical change. My God, you have to, that have to take place in your life. Young ladies, be cute, but be sanctified. Enjoy your cuteness, but be sanctified. Senior women, be stately, but be loving and kind. Single ladies, don't always answer the phone. Don't always be available. Let him see your value. Let him miss you a little bit. My God. Single mothers, look to Jehovah Jireh. Call on the name of the Lord. There is a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess, Lord, help me. Help me with my children. Teach me how to raise my children. Cover my children with your blood. Oh, God, take them on the schoolyard. Protect them from gun violence. Look to the Lord. And then, women, know who you are in Christ Jesus. Walk in your kingdom authority. Hold your head up high. It's not of you, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You do not belong in that gallon jar. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't belong in that gallon jar. My God, you've got to take action. You are what you do and not what you say you do. Be careful, saints. Don't hold up your destiny with a ragged life, dressed up on, in church at the convention and live a ragged life during the week. Be holy, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Take the high road. Sometimes you got to take the high road. With your husband, sometimes you got to take the high road. With your children, with your loved ones, you've got to take the high road. The Bible says, seek peace and pursue it. It doesn't always matter who's right or who's wrong, but you want to live in a peaceable, a peaceable environment. As I close, just like this woman with the issue of blood, there are some of you in this room that are bleeding. 
bleeding emotionally, dressed up and smiling on the outside, but bleeding on the inside, desperately hurting. But God has a promise for you, casting all of your cares on him, knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. A prophecy is good. It's good for others to prophesy in your life. But sometimes you need to go and stand in the mirror and speak in your own life. I am somebody. I am a conqueror. If God is for me, who can be against me? This woman had faith. She got in the press. She took possession of her promise. And then remember this, there's no expiration date on his promises. Though the vision tarry, learn how to wait for it. Wait for your promise. Wait for the turnaround. Wait for the breakthrough. In the meantime, learn how to praise him. Lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. And say, Lord, I bless you. I thank you. I glorify you. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Rise up today and not tomorrow. We saw this woman's encounter. She touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says immediately, immediately, she was made whole. The stench was gone. The shame was gone. The outcast status was gone. The isolated life was over. Only she knew what it really took to be delivered. And there's some of you in here today, only you know what it takes to be delivered. If you have to run around the church, do whatever you have to do to be delivered. Take your shoes off and be delivered. Be healed and be set free. My Lord. Oh, don't worry about what people say. They'll talk about you when you do something. They'll talk about you when you don't do anything. You cannot really be used by God until you forget about what people have to say. There is a promise. Jesus gave his life. He hung on the cross that we might have salvation. So women of the church of God in Christ, whatever your category, whatever your title, take back your losses. Take back your promises. Take back your calling. Say, Lord, renew in me a right spirit. Oh, touch me right now. One more time. In the meantime, don't wait till the battle is over, but learn how to shout now. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the rain, in the midst of the pain, soar in the universe. Come out of that jar. You don't belong in that jar. You are somebody special. A royal priesthood, a chosen generation. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And when we come together and pray, and when we bind our hearts together, it doesn't matter who we are. But if we just let down the facade and let down the hypocrisy and say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, I'm real, I'm authentic, I'll do whatever it takes. Just mold me and shape me, make me what you'd have me to be. And when he talks to you in the midnight hour, just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, he wants our yes, Lord. Yes to our will, his will, yes to his way, oh God. Oh, God, it's rough. Some of you have a rough time at home. People don't know what you're going through. But if you just say, yes, Lord, I'm waiting on you. 
I'm waiting on you. I'm going to take possession. I know what your word says. To count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptation. Knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Let patience have a perfect work. All of you that are waiting on a promise, everybody standing. All of you that are waiting on a promise, come to this altar now. God has made you a promise, and you're waiting on a promise. It may be your family. It may be your finances. It may be healing in your body. It may be erasing low self-esteem. Whatever your promise is, I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten your promise. He made you. And in the midnight hour, he can come to you. We just need to learn how to lift our eyes to the hills, not depend on people. There are times in your life he'll move every prop out of your way. Well, I thought I could depend on her, and I thought I could depend on him. So what he'll do is he'll just move everybody out of your way so that you don't have any choice but to lean on him. Come up closer. Come up closer. We're going to agree that the promise will be met. Those of you that don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, or you once knew him and you strayed away, today that you hear my voice. Don't harden your heart. Come and give your life and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let him do a new work. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. We need to decree and declare that we're brand new. I'm new. I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. I've made mistakes, but I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God, and I'm forgiven. I will walk in faith. I will stay in the press. Stay in the press. Stay in the press. Women of God, stay in the press. Don't turn around. You may have to go into your secret closet and take a deep breath, but come out breathing. Come out ready for the battle and be strong in him. As I pray, I want you to know that whatever it is that might be hindering you from receiving the promise of God, the scripture says, and let us lay aside every weight. Sometimes our children are a weight. Sometimes our grandchildren, they're a weight. We take the whole world on our shoulders because that's just who we are. We're nurturers. We're lovers. We're lovers of people. We take on the weight of the whole community. But I want you to know this afternoon, you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go grudges hurts. Sometimes that man is in the grave and you still holding grudge on what he did. You've got to let it go. It's not for him, it's for you. Walk in your liberty. Take possession. Be all that God has called you to be. Don't worry about other people. When the Lord puts a, his hands upon your life, sometimes it's a lonely walk. You have to let go of those that are hindering you. Everybody that comes with you can't go with you. But you have to realize that he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. You're a woman of the church of God in Christ. You're not just some woman. You are a woman of the church of God in Christ. You're a standard bearer. You're a champion. You're a trailblazer. You're a winner. You are a conqueror. You are victorious. As I pray, I want you just to think on that promise. Not somebody else's promise, but think on that promise. 
those things that God wakes you up in the midnight hour and won't let it go. He's working in your life. You're not imagining things. Who, me? Oh, no, no, not me. Yes, you. He's put it in your spirit. He's trying to show you where he wants to take you. But he needs you to cooperate. He needs you to surrender. Dear gracious Father, I bless and magnify your name. I plead the blood of Jesus over doubt, over depression, over oppression, over low self-esteem, over rejection. I cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree your liberty. I declare and decree deliverance. I declare and decree your power. Holy Ghost, do the work. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Do the work. Thank you for the boldness. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for joy. Thank you for restoration. Renew, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I call it done. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for the promise. Thank you that you thought enough of me to give me the promise. And I call it done. Lord, prepare me. Prepare me for the work. I say yes to your will and yes to your way. And it is so. And it's already done. And it's already done. And it's already done. Salvation for your children. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for the miracle. Miracle working wonder. You're a wonder, you're a wonder, you're a wonder. You're a wonder, you're a wonder. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'll give you the glory. I'll give you the honor. I have sense enough, sense enough to know it's not me. It's not by might nor by power. But thank you for the promise. Work it out. Orchestrate it. I'll just step in your steps. I'll obey your voice. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll obey. Thank you for obedience. Thank you for yielded spirit. Thank you for surrendered spirit. And it is so. Take possession. Today, take possession. In your mind, take possession of your dream of your vision of your business of your promotion of your healing of deliverance and it is so and it is so take possession now i want you just to reach down and just touch two or three of the hymns touch your neighbor's hymn reach down touch it touch her hymn touch her hymn just touch Thank you for the touch. 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 Touch, Lord. Touch the Him. Touch the Him. Touch the Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up to the heavens. And say, Lord, I receive my promise on today. And it's all already done. Already done. Already done. Yes. Glory.
Bishop James Church in Beverly Tucker. Are you in the room? Just stay right there. Just stay right there. Just stay right there. Okay, would you come over there and sit where I sat? 
sit where I sat right there. Because I just, in this season right here, would you all plant a seed in the ministry right now? I'm not going to tell you to get in a line. I'm not going to tell you how much to give. But would you go in your purses? Go wherever it is and bring a seed right here. We're asking the ushers, yes, to hasten with the basket. And I want you to run down here real fast. It's, no, not too fast, but just run down here fast. I had to go get Sister Blevins because my heart is still overwhelmed with who he is. We thank Ohio, it's Holy Convocation 2018 with Bishop Edward T. Cook and Mother Thelma Giles Butts for the Ohio North First Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ, July 17th to the 21st. On Monday, it's Ohio North's Urban Initiatives Town Hall Meeting. At with thanksgiving enter his courts with praise I'll be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting hey oh taste and see that he is good he healeth all my diseases he satisfies my mouth with good things oh taste and see that the Lord is good. We're getting ready to leave this place, but not his presence. Ah, Pastor Andy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, but they're done. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know what, Mother Lewis, the Lord put on my heart that um, because of who you are, because of who you represent and what you represent. I just wanted to sound an alarm, Bishop, to the women of God that we have a great, you know, our heritage is great. The Church of God in Christ with the women of God. It's not just shouting and dancing. And I love to dance. Because I danced before I got saved. Amen. 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 And they put the lights down, Bishop, and told me that was the dance floor yeah. for those that were saved. But, see, y'all trying to act like y'all ain't never danced before and your partner wasn't, your partner wasn't Jesus. Your partner wasn't Jesus. Y'all just be real. Your partner wasn't Jesus. But I changed partners. And so when they announced the dance floor, I don't mind getting on the dance floor. 
Because I know who my, my redeemer is. And superintendent, I dance. Not like you, but I dance. And Mother Lewis, I wanted to tell you, I got so carried away in a women's day, I just yelled out, you ought to be dancing. I thought I woke up a whole lot of stuff that y'all knew from way back yonder. I never even knew about it. But see, y'all wasn't at the national convention that Bishop, Bishop had said that and sang it while the saints were rejoicing. And I guess it was still in my spirit. So when I came from the national to the jurisdiction, the service got so high and I said, you ought to be dancing. Where's Bruce? Where's Bruce? Where's Bruce? Where's Bruce? Y'all tell Bruce to dance. 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 Y'all say, tell say Bruce dance. I don't know when it's gonna come. Bishop, that's Bishop's brother. <laughs> so Bishop was looking around himself. But anyway. I thought because of who we had here, I wanted to hear the shofar. Now, I couldn't find nobody to do the shofar. But I told, I, I, I called, they told me if you need anything in Columbus, that capital district, they told me about Superintendent Chang. But they said, you need anything else? And I got a text from this one. Do you have any special requests? That's what they said. But see, they said it to me. See, you, you don't know what you're doing when you... So I said, I want a shofar. But Mother Lewis, because I read in the Jewish history that when special events happen, they would blow the shofar. They had different ways they blew it. It depended on what the celebration was. It depended on the celebration. He's doing the best he can, y'all. Praise him. <laughs> was that it? Will you try it one more time? That was the breath he had. But you have a prayer. You have prayer. You have prayer. You have prayer. Everything that had breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him for his wonderful work. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you for breath in our bodies to praise you with. Now, Father, we ask you to take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time. Let all the saints say, Amen. There you go.